Here at JetBrains, we create ideas and many other products that make developers' lives better. My talk will be from the Big Data Tools plugin perspective. Now we will talk about the data engineering and let's understand what the life of a data engineer is. Let's say we have some external source that produces big data. For example, it might be some e-commerce site with thousands of purchases every second. Next, all this data is transferred and extracted to external storage, for example, HDFS or cloud storage like Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and so on, or maybe just to a hard drive to a local file system. The data engineer then looks at them with his eyes, understands what kind of structure there is, and transforms them. And the transformation depends on the needs of a business and business logic. And finally, he loads it back into storage, where this data can be used, for example, for the needs of some business intelligence system, or maybe this is some ready-made report with graphs and conclusions, which can be viewed with eyes and shown to people who will make decisions on these analytics. This procedure is called Extract, Transform, Load, or ETL for short, and many data engineers do this task full-time, all the time. You may also have a data science and machine learning team on your company, and then the picture will be much more complicated. Data engineers' tasks will include working with data scientists and deploying in production the models they have created. Still, in this demo, we will not touch a scenario like this. The most popular technology stacks at the moment are Hadoop, Spark, and Zeppelin. Scala is used as preferred programming language. Our Big Data Tools plugin is created to support all these technologies. Hadoop is a set of open source systems and frameworks for working with big data. This is very foundation. Everything is built on top of it. In particular, Hadoop implements the HDFS distributed file system. It's the most widely used file system. Spark is a big data framework that works with Hadoop and provides a SQL-like API for querying data. SQL is generally a very convenient thing, and besides, it allows you to use the skills of analysts who are used to work with SQL databases and understand SQL very well. And Zeppelin is an interactive notebook that allows you to type code and visualize data quickly. It works with a bunch of popular technologies out of the box, including Spark and Hadoop. Uh, it is similar to Jupyter Notebook that data scientists use, but much better suited for use with Spark. The primary programming language in Zeppelin is Scala. It's kind of data engineering specificity, but Python is also supported and Zeppelin kind of supported. Let's talk about Zeppelin. In Zeppelin, it's straightforward to type code and quickly interactively communicate with the results of its execution. Let's create a new node and select a Spark interpreter in a long long list of interpreters available to Zeppelin. We are in the browser, so I can zoom it. Let's type print line hello world and run it. And we instantly see the results of the execution. Moreover, the results of our work are straightforward to visualize. I will not waste time to prepare data now. Instead, I'll open the standard notebook with examples that come with Zeppelin. As you can see, the results of all calculations are instantly visualized on graphs and tables. It's very handy. So what's the catch? Zeppelin is not the best editor in the world. Let's see. Can we move on to the definitions of the methods we are using? No. Can we see the documentation of these methods? No. Maybe some of them are deprecated and we misuse them. Can we find this? No, we can't. So what about Scala code completion? This is some kind of code completion, but it's very elementary and maybe rudimentary. This is because it only suggests symbols that it is directly in class descriptions, but it cannot do a complete code analysis of the project and tell anything based on the context. The problem is that Scala is rather complicated language and it is challenging to edit it just like that without any additional information. Features like implicits make 
to code and readable without the help of an IDE, and therefore we really need code analysis. And in short, Zeppelin is a great interactive notebook, but it falls short in terms of code editing quack and modern IDEs. And to be honest, there's a whole infinity between Zeppelin and IDE. Okay, should we pick a good IDE? In this case, one of the JetBrains IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. Yes, they work excellent with Scala and other programming languages, but until recently it was impossible to work with notebooks, look at data samples and visualize data. What does the lack of visuals mean? That means that it is impossible to do practical exploratory data analysis inside the IDE, which is not very good, you don't want to switch between IntelliJ IDEA and Zeppelin all the time. And the last component here is the browser and maybe the console. We still need to check them to find the status of our Spark jobs, our Hadoop applications, and to download and upload files to external cloud storage like S3. So we are trapped in a copy-paste triangle. Imagine you wrote your code in Zeppelin and now you need code analysis. Of course, you can copy it to the ID and check if it works. Unfortunately, this is not so easy. All your code would be read and you need to create a project, configure dependencies, write settings, and only then the IDE will understand what is happening more or less. This is not easy and even if done correctly, the IDE might still not match Zeppelin's environment. Of course, you can Google the documentation. You can copy paste your function name in the browser and see everything with your own eyes. And of course, Hadoop, Spark and Cloud Storages have their own web interfaces. And if you want, you can open them, copy paste the resource name and see the content. Do you see the pattern here? Copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste triangle. So this again is very inconvenient because it is the source of constant attention shifts. As a result, half of your working time, you just wait for some next web interface to load. You press the reload button in the browser to find out when the job is done again and again. And the browser may end up with thousands of tabs. Uh, first, there's a loss of working time and time is money. And secondly, it is very unpleasant and uncomfortable. This is exhausting. That is why we have made a special plugin that can be installed into different JetBrains IDEs. And this plugin allows you to go through the entire ETL data engineering process without leaving your favorite IDE. You don't have to copy paste anything anymore and you don't have to switch focus anymore. As the rest of this demo is intended to show how it looks like and you can make your life much easier using this plugin, provided of course that your technologies are the Hadoop stack, Spark and Zeppelin. These are our target technologies. To use the plugin, you need to install one of the supported JetBrains IDEs. For example, IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition. You could also try to use PyCharm Professional or DataGrip, but the complete feature set currently is available only inside IDEA Ultimate. The next step is to go to the settings window and install the Big Data Tools plugin. If it's not installed already. As you can see, I have my plugin installed. I will not set up production like Zeppelin, Hadoop and Spark right now because this is a long and complicated task usually done by system engineers but I will use my local virtual machine with Zeppelin and our test clusters with Hadoop and Spark. Let's walk through the entire ETL data engineering process. And let's start with the, the extract phase. First, we need to get the files from somewhere. We support multiple file storages, the local disk, HDFS, Amazon S3, Google storage, and so on. This is a key feature. We can open any of them right in the IDE. Look, there is a panel on the right and we can add storage here. The easiest way is to add local storage. All we need is a local path.
With cloud storage, the story is more complicated because you need to specify authorization settings. I already have ready-made connections where everything is filled correctly. You can see how it works. For example, you can take a local file and upload it to Google Storage. In data engineering, we use several file formats, at least the following, CSV, Avro, Parquet, and ORC. Historically, it all started with the CSV format. The good thing about the CSV format is that it's very simple and can be supported in any technology in a couple of hours. Well, there are all sorts of nuances. For example, if you want CSV to be well compatible with Excel, you have to spend more time, maybe even a couple of days, but no more. An important part of exploratory data analysis is the ability to open a file and see with your eyes what is inside there. Now we can open the CSV file without leaving the IDE and see what is inside. Big Data Tools plugin does not load the entire file, but some, uh, some part of it a sample. Heuristic determines the sample size, but in general for CSV we load something around a thousand records. Big Data Tools plugin can display such files in two versions. First, in form of classic text representation, uh, the way it is in the file, and secondly, visually in the form of a table. Any column can sort the table by clicking on its heading, Individual cells can be copied or saved per file, etc. The CSV idea continued with a raw data format, which works in much the same way as CSV, only it has much better compression. The next improvement is the ORC format. The main feature is that different compressors can compress each of the columns with custom settings. Those the best for this field, uh, for this content type. Another improved format is Parquet. It is worse with compression, but it has its own feature. It's, uh, it is optimized as much as possible to make fast queries for this file at the Spark level. An essential difference between Parquet and ORC from CSV and Avro is that those formats do not support rewriting. If the file is written, then it is written. Nothing else can be added to it at the end. If you look at the viewer inside the Big Data Tools plugin, then all these data formats look exactly the same, except that there's no text representation for RC. For Parquet, as an exception, we added text representation simulation. It looks about the same as CSV. The only difference between these formats in the Explorer tool window are icons, and that's it. The next step of our ETL process is transform, and we will use Zeppelin for this. Now, let's add Zeppelin to the project. As you can see, I have already added several different Zeppelin instances there. You can have many of them. Please note that when connecting to Zeppelin, you can enable SSH tunnel directly from the user interface. This is necessary if you want to connect to the inside of some protected high security area. Typically, no Zeppelin ports can be opened to the outside. The opposite is too insecure. So the only usual way is to use VPN or SSH tunnel. Each time creating tunnels from the console is quite tricky and frustrating. This is a long line with parameters that are easy to forget uh, when you type it to the console. Uh, so we created a graphical UI that allows you to connect by ticking one box and filling in a few parameters. Now we are connected to Zeppelin. On the right, in the tool window, you can see all interactive notebooks that exist on the Zeppelin instance. We can go into any of the notebooks, run it, and see what happened. We can easily manage them. We can create, delete, move them between directories, and so on. 
it is much more convenient than the web interface. If you open the notebook inside, you can see approximately the same thing that we saw in the Zeppelin web interface, but better, much better. What exactly is better is the next story. And now, web coding time. Let's do some actual work. Imagine you have a data set of movies and ratings from a site like IMDB, and you want to study the data set. First, we need to create a notebook. Then, we need to find the data set on the local drive and remember its structure, movie ID, year, and title. So, this is the root directory of our data set. Let's read the file. Usually we do not know the exact name of the function we need, but the autocompletion helps us with this. Autocompletion saves a lot of time. Variables inside the strings are autocompleted too. So here is our movie titles index file. And all syntax errors are marked red. Let me revert this intentional error. But what if we need to after complete our custom code? No problem, we just can open properties of our Zeppelin connection, open dependencies, and add anything we want as a module, or maybe a jar file. Let's print schema and run the paragraph. As you can see, all the columns are named C0, C1, C2, and this is not fancy at all. Let's rename them. To the F function gets the column titles. Let's see what column titles do we need. Okay, movie ID, year, and title. Next, we will show the data. As you can see, the Big Data Tools plugin renders all the tables inside the IDE, and those tables are very fast. By the way, you can control hover with mice any function call inside the IDE to get extended information about it. And you can control click to navigate to function definition even if it is an external function. Also, you can control click any symbol that is declared inside the notebook and then you go to definition of this symbol. Also, you can write markdown documentation right inside the IDE. When you write it, it has basic code covering but also you can write code blocks, and inside this code blocks you will have all the code completion you have inside the IDE. Now you can run the markdown cell and watch the actual output. Let's look at our training set again. What files do we have? Let's read all these files and try to merge it with our movie title.
Now we need to check the structure of our files to understand how to churn the data. Actually, this code is too complex to write it on the demo, so I will not waste your time and just copy and paste it from the buffer. Save mode class is not imported, but we can quickly import it to the first cell of the notebook when pressing Alt plus Enter. Here it is on the first cell. Now let's run it, and this is quite long iteration. So now imagine that we want to repartition the data. It works, but it is not quite intuitive because we have no idea what types do we call on each dot operator. How can we solve this? And how can we fix this? Easy, just put every uh, new function on a separate line. See, it's much easier to understand what's going on here now. And we need to restart it just in case. Why do we use Zeppelin? We use it for interactive visualizations. So let's draw a chart. We will just gather all the data in a single place and group by the number of the ratings. In the end, we should get a table where for each title, we will see how many ratings were recorded. Oh no, I have an error in my SQL. Let's fix it. Now, after reading the error message, it's obvious that total ratings alias was in the wrong place. Hooray, we have a result, but we don't need a table, we need a chart. And our chart obviously shows something very strange because axis is wrong. Let's fix this by dragging total ratings axis name to the y-axis and now we have a good result. Please note has how fast our tables are compared to tables in the browser. And last but not least, you can add all your Spark and Hadoop instances inside the IDE and monitor your jobs and essential properties of these jobs. So, we finish the whole ETL process inside your favorite IDE without switching to a browser or console or anything else. That's it. Thank you for watching.